Hi folks, Jonathan Blakely from Investigative Training. I know a lot of you people have been buying the Brino TLC 200 and you've been putting it in uh, weatherproof boxes for outside work and um, I've taken that to a whole new level and I do not recommend this for anybody because I guarantee you your warranty will be through. <laughs> <laughs> but to me it's worth it because I want the most covert device um, I don't want to have to set it back far and stuff like that if I don't want to and I'm going to show it to you right now I am not finished so I'll do this video in segments and uh, you'll see how I have developed this so alrighty here it is All right, here is my my Brino 200. Uh, look what I did! Thank goodness these little uh, screws. Yep, they're easy. You just need a tiny little screwdriver. I took off the sides; they come right off very easily. And then I took off this screw here, pulled the back completely off, pulled this. This is the battery unit off and popped open the adjustable head and it has a nice long ribbon down to a nice tiny tiny camera that protrudes at the front so here's my box before I get to the box this camera here I took a nail file and I don't know if you see see where those posts are here and the other side I filed those down a bit at a slight angle that's so that the most protruding thing is is the lens because I'm putting the camera in here and I'm actually ground the walls down thinner because you want this as thin as possible to get the smallest hole um, the, the thinner it is the smaller the hole you need and the closer you get this lens where are you where art thou right here to the outside hole the smaller the hole and I want it to defeat raindrops and I'll probably even put even though this is going underneath I'll probably put a slight little eyebrow diagonal eyebrow for any runoff water so it doesn't go to the lens but this is a uh, junction box regular square junction box buy the lid separately and it comes with the uh, gasket that goes around and put the lid on it's weatherproof so how this will look is uh, not using this one here although you can actually not do any of this and shoot out through one of these maybe a large they come in a larger circumference this is the three quarter inch probably to avoid vignetting you go larger if you really want to go simply you don't want to take this apart and all that stuff um, it's going to go like this I'm going to take this top piece off I'm going to take these side things off and I drilled a hole right here for this. She has a flange on top. So it's going to go like this. And the, the reason I did this is because when I have it up and I put the lid on, there's no lid on there, I can turn the camera left and right as opposed to having to use door shims to angle it off of a flat wall or post or whatever you're putting it on. This is like a tank turret and you have to have a turret if you're going to set this up quick and, and move on. And uh, if it comes out of the box, it, how would you get those odd angles like that angle coming up from a flat wall? Say this is the wall and it's flat. How do you shoot it at diagonal? Well, easy. You just do this and you move it. So, but I'm going to have to, with of course, hot glue gun, attach this onto this. And of course, when you do that, you do not have any batteries in this. You never want to power your devices when you're using wet glue, even though I'm going to avoid a lot of the little circuitries and stuff, anyways. Um, do not have power going to your device. So, um, 
This is as far as I've gotten. Here's some of the tools you need. This is a, oh, I still have stuff on it, Dremel bit. And this is what it looks like. In the little Dremel section, it's a cutter. You can't do this without it. This is about five bucks, six bucks or so, I don't know how much they cost, but that's it. And that's what you use to grind off. Um, this I ground off a post that was right here. Didn't need to do that because originally I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to have this thing in diagonally this way to get the full length of that, but I don't need to. It's going in this way. If you can see that, it's going in this way. It's gonna go right down at the end. And this is gonna go in here. Well, you're thinking right now, well, the image is gonna be upside down now because the camera's upside down. No, it's actually long enough it can go in like this and line up with that hole. Um, but you do need to, in order to get this flat in there, there's a little nub in the middle, a little stuck, stuck up with this, ground it right off. Um, you need to grind off, uh, there's four posts here, the inner posts, ground those right off. And I lined up this hole in a way uh, where if I just put, if I put it like this, this would be sticking up too high and I wouldn't be able to put my lid on. So what I did was, it's very low, so I had to cut with the Dremel piece again. Uh, it doesn't look too clean down there, but I cut a groove here for this groove to go down into. And I angled it in, it's, it's very good. And it didn't go all the way through, although it probably came very close to going through. Now this circle was cut with a one and three quarters, where is it here? Where's my cutter? Let me find it for you. Here it is. It's uh, one and three quarters, and I still have the plastic uh, thing in there that I use to drill that out. Now I didn't account for, th this looked like the perfect size, it cut the hole slightly larger than I thought to tell you the truth. There's a little wiggle room in there because when this thing's turning it kind of wobbles a bit and it creates a bigger hole than you think. The size under this, uh, this is 44 millimeters. There's an oddball size you can also get that is 41 millimeters. It's not, it's like between one and a half I think it's what, one in five eights, I think. Um, double check that, but it's it, w it, it would be a very tight fit for this, or a tighter fit I, than this one. I might try that next time. The only good thing about this one is, I'm in a little bit loose in here, is that when it's up on a pole, you can put something under the back like that. Actually, it'll stay up for you for a downward tilt case it's high on say a pole or post or whatever so it, it might be good that there's a little bit of wiggle room there but I don't know if you consider that too much wiggle room if I were to do it again I'd probably go with the smaller one just to make it tight fit even though this will be downwards and uh, I just don't like the idea of having too much of a space there although I'm just a little picky maybe um, as I say, this is going to get sawed off here, and it's going to get waterproofed. Uh, the lid, I don't have the lid with me, but you've all seen the blank uh, junction box lids, PVC lids with the gasket on them. They, they're they right there when you get this thing. Uh, these things coming off, and I will give uh, another update when I get... Uh, when I get this actually glued in with hot glue. So, that's it. Johnston Blakely Investigative Training. Do not try this at home. I guarantee you, your warranty will be shot.